Hey everyone, welcome back to another layout update. I haven't had a ton of time to work on the layout recently, and well, I've said previously that I don't have a lot of downtime in general right now, because I'm fairly busy. I am trying my best to work on this layout whenever I have the motivation, and while well, I've certainly done quite a bit of work, and well, a lot more thinking. When it's all said and done, when I come home at the end of the day, I don't really have the motivation to work on uh, stuff like this. It's a lot easier to just boot up a video game and have some fun with that until I get bored. But some days I come home and I have the motivation to work on the layout. And uh, on the weekends, I actually tend to get a lot of work done. So I'll show off what I've done mostly then. I've almost fully wired in the overhead contact system. I have a feeder here, which is pretty obvious. I haven't bothered painting over it yet. But then I have one more feeder over there, and this uh, gantry ended up being pretty helpful in terms of that. But yeah, the electric trains can run off of that with their panographs up. And I've done a few more conversions, and there's more to come on the way. So I'm excited about all that, and so far it's gone really good. But other than that, there haven't been a whole lot of radical changes to the track work, the overhead catenary, or much to do with the trains at all. But what has changed, and what you'll notice here, is I've started putting up some piers and some walls to eventually put on the second layer. Now I think over here is a much better demonstration of what I'm going to be going for. Uh, again, this is just sort of the first layer of everything. It's not final. It's not supposed to look that pretty, but I'm just getting an idea of what I want here. I hope that this sort of gets my point across from what I've been talking about since the very beginning, where I'm going to have the trains pretty much occupy the entire first level, and then pretty much unrelated from that, I'm going to have the second level be some city scenes. The construction of the support system has been the most time-consuming process of this so far because I wanted to do a decent job of it. I decided upon six and a quarter inches as the height for the support system, mostly because that was sort of the perfect height to not be too tall, as to make it hard to see over it and work on it if it's on the layout, and not making it too short as to not allow rolling stock to go underneath on the sidings. The back walls, here we have one that's at sort of an angle with the track here. It's more parallel to this siding here. And this one, which is perfectly and completely parallel with all of the tracks here, going all the way over there. Those are plywood that have been cut to three feet long and, as I said, six and a quarter tall. And they've been secured in with some L brackets on either side. And so far, that's actually worked quite well, and I'm pretty happy with the result. The piers are 2x4s that are cut into 6 and a quarter inch tall segments. And they've been placed here, and they've all been painted a nice gray color. And I painted the back wall black to sort of make the areas underneath the platforms feel a little darker. And then the sides and the backs are painted the same gray as the pillars. Going back here, you can see what I mean. I haven't pulled up this tape. But... I painted this all with cheap acrylic paint. A little actually went quite a long way with painting all of this. I just want to pull up all this tape. Then over here, you can sort of see what I mean with this back wall. But these supports are held up with L brackets as well, and it's a pretty sturdy foundation for what I'm going to put on top of it. Speaking of a foundation, I'm going to be using foam as the surface for these scenes because, well, it's not incredibly structural. For the most part, it's just acting as a base to put everything on. Even though that's the case, I still tried to be as structurally supportive as I could. I think it's perfectly adequate. Another advantage to using foam over plywood is this is very light, and I do intend on having these be movable so I can easily pick it up, move it off the layout, and do fine work on it without having to stand high or really reach over there and risk damaging stuff. And this foam is reused from the old layout, so I didn't have to go buy new materials. The only thing that sort of hampers 
the usage of this material are some of the holes I made for lighting, although that's not really a big deal. I can easily patch those up. The underside was painted black just to give it a more realistic look rather than blue and old uh, layout debris from the previous layout. Now I'm going to talk scenery. This part of the layout is what I'm working on right now. I haven't really bothered with that over there. I haven't cut out or even measured the foam piece for that, but I know I have enough material to pull it off. Now I'm going to get into the idea behind this piece of scenery. I'm not going to talk about the um, island over there, but I am going to talk about this one. And my concept here is I'm going to have sort of the outskirts of the city here and a, I guess downtown over there. It's going to be pretty heavily based off of Chicago. For this part, I want to emulate a specific kind of I would struggle to call it a suburb, but I guess technically it is, um, within the city of Chicago. And that is sort of, I guess, on the outer city limits. It's still quite urban, but we haven't exited the municipality quite yet. I guess to put it into these terms, you could get either a CTA or Pace bus from this neighborhood. Like most suburbs, I'm going to have an arterial road here, and then I'm going to have some feeder roads going into... A little bit of a residential area but I want some commercial stuff along here it's just gonna be right up against the street I'm not gonna have any parking in front of the stores except maybe street parking I'll talk about that in a minute and then to this side of the road I'm gonna want I guess a cemetery if you've ever been to Chicago you'll notice that a lot of the neighborhoods have giant plots of land that don't have any buildings on them and that's because those were cemeteries that were built long before the neighborhood was put there. And then once the neighborhood was put there, they, they didn't tear up the cemetery or anything. It just sort of stayed there. So that's what I want to emulate. Maybe I'll have like a cast iron fence or something along the sidewalk. But overall, if you've ever visited neighborhoods like that in Chicago, or if you've lived in one, you know exactly what I'm trying to talk about. Now getting into the roads specifically, I've actually had quite a bit of fun thinking about how I'm going to lay this out. As a little bit of a traffic engineering and transportation nerd, well, of course, I'm a transportation nerd, but city planning and road planning nerd specifically, I found that the typical North American lane width translated to O scale, which is 148th, is about three inches. And these pieces of sandpaper, these sheets of sandpaper, are nine inches wide. So realistically, you can fit in three prototypical lanes on one piece of sandpaper. Now what you'll notice here is there's actually kind of four lanes, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Initially, in concept, I wanted to have four travel lanes. That's two lanes going this way that are dedicated for general traffic, then two lanes going this way that is the same deal. But then I started thinking about it, and I wanted some on-street parking over here as that's pretty typical and then I wanted to do some public transit stuff so I decided that this was going to be a bus only lane and then I kept thinking and making changes I went between having this be a one-way street and a two-way street but I think I ended up on something okay here you remember what I said about prototypically this road is actually a three-lane road and I'm just squeezing in the parking here I might add a little bit to here, and I'm thinking that I'll use red colored sandpaper as a whole nother lane to denote that that lane is the bus only lane, as that's usually the color, at least in North America, that we use to denote a bus lane. And in terms of era, street design changes quite a bit, so I'm still thinking about all of this in terms of what era I want to sort of portray, although I'm not married to one idea at all. So if you have any ideas relating to road design, uh, make sure you let me know. I have a lot of things going on in my head that I want to try to put out here. But yeah, that's sort of what I think about having this road. Also, I want to talk about the uh, road being sandpaper a little more. So far, it's actually been fantastic. Um, it's much more pleasurable to put down than plaster or anything, and it looks great. I really, really like the look of a recently um, paved road, or a road that has a nice fresh layer of asphalt on it. And well, black sandpaper is a perfect representation of that. 
the cars grip nicely to it and roll nicely too. And I'm someone that likes to, you know, pose the vehicles, move them around. I don't like to keep them down in one place. I like to change the scenes up a little bit. So the um, smooth and durable road surface here actually helps out quite a bit. That's just about it for this layout update. Um, again, not a whole lot has been done besides starting the platforms here. But conceptually, a lot has been changing. So let me know what you think about all this. Again, especially if you're into roads. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.